What's up, guys? It's Kate Lemon here. Welcome to episode 26 of Spill the Tear Roll, the JRPG podcast where we talk about JRPG news, release dates, what I want to play, what I've played, etc. I don't have my notes in front of me, which is why that sounded worse than usual, because this is another special episode. Like I mentioned in one of my previous episodes, I am moving soon. And so I was actually planning to do a normal episode this week, but something last second came up. And so I wouldn't be able to gather the news and all that. So I'm recording this the night before. It is currently 1 a.m. And uh, because this was kind of happening last second, um, I'm doing another tier list. I want to try something uh, different with the uh, special episode this time, but because this is very last second, I'm just doing another tier list. I'll try to think of what I can tier list because I mentioned in the previous tier list episodes I did a tier list for Kingdom Hearts games I did a tier list for Trails games and I said that I can't really do any other JRPG series because there is no other JRPG series that I played a lot of the games of like East is the closest one and even that I probably played like less than half the games maybe and so what I thought I would do is uh, this time I'm going to be doing the a tier list of the Kingdom Hearts 2 worlds as you can see on the screen right now probably and uh, I just realized when I was thinking of this type of format for special episodes this is pretty much just going to be me doing top list but in a v- very detailed way um if you've listened to any of the actual normal episodes of spill the tear roll i do have the top casual list segment which is supposed to be a top list which is very casual so i just think of the top three off the top of my head i don't try to think of it too deep and i pretty much give my list like that and so the tier list special episodes could kind of be me going very deep into it so like when, when i'm going to be going through my kingdom Hearts two worlds right now i'm going to be giving you my definitive list top to bottom every single one accounted for instead of just me casually thinking of the top three so that's what it's going to be as i always mention because this is also an audio podcast i will be saying every move that i make and updating so if you are listening to this and not watching uh you should not be lost okay so we have a bunch of worlds here in kingdom Hearts 2 as you see on the screen uh it doesn't actually say any of the world names it only has the images but from what i can tell it is 100 acre woods beast castle pirates caribbean pride lands space paranoids molan's world uh the tune i don't know what the Toon World's called, like Toon Town or something. Twilight Town, Agrabah, Atlantis, Mickey's Castle, Halloween Town, Hollow Bastion, Olympus Coliseum, and I believe that's a world that never was. This is gonna be very interesting to me because I feel like I made a video for this like fucking years ago, like in high school. It's like a decade ago at this point. And so, in terms of actually like uh, an, a full list updated, I don't think I have any idea of what my list would be, especially like naming all the worlds. I don't know if I've actually done one with all the worlds that Kinemars do. All I know right now, definitively, is my top worlds are Twilight Town and Hollow Bastion. So let me let me just put these in S right now. I'm not sure if they'll like both say they or not, but these are the two worlds that I believe are usually always in my top three. And so I'm going to keep those at the top. And uh, I mentioned this in all my tier maker videos, but the way I tier stuff is purely based on feeling. So even in the videos where I tiered like the Kingdom Hearts games, they're based on vibe. So if I really enjoyed myself while playing that game, it will be ranked higher than another one if I didn't enjoy as much. Even if the lower one is objectively seen as a better game, like technical wise, like visuals, and gameplay i don't give a fuck about that if i enjoy the thing more it will go higher on the list and so i haven't played this game in years so it's been a while since i played Kingdom Hearts 2 the last time was when it was remade on the playstation uh, playstation 4 i believe and so i'm gonna be going off that but at least when i was a kid when i used to play Kingdom Hearts 2 i always gravitated towards the worlds that were more bright and and like fun uh, a good example is i believe one of the first choices you get to make when you play the game is do you want to go to uh, mulan's world or do you want to go to beast castle i always prefer to go to mulan's world because that is relatively you know compared to beast castle a more bright a more like happy world comparatively and more like comedic the beast castle was always dark and gloomy you're trying to figure out what the fuck is going on with beast etc and so that's an example where like if i had to rank those two mulan is higher and so i feel like by the time i'm done this the darker worlds are going to be closer to the bottom and the brighter worlds are going to be close to the top oh see i have no idea i haven't rank these in a long time the next one is 100 acre woods this is weird because 100 acre woods is like one of those special worlds where which which isn't like a full world um another example is like the toon world and space Paranoids. space Paranoids is i think a mini world but it felt like a full world still 100 acre woods is like purely a mini game world so this is gonna be hard to rank i like the vibes of it i like the winnie the pooh vibes but like it's kind of hard to rank when it's not really a full world so i'm gonna i'm gonna hold off on that let's go to beast castle beast castle like i said when i was a kid i didn't really like playing it because it was uh pretty gloomy but like uh, looking at it from more like you know an older point of view it is a pretty cool world i like the fights in it i like the fight with zaldin and i did enjoy like looking back at it like the fights i did enjoy and i believe this was one of the first places that you i i actually got to experience the the mickey mechanic where when you die you get to use mickey so that's a good memory too so this is going to change a lot, but so far, I mean, right now I'm going to put Beast Castle 
in B tier. I don't know if it'll move around after, but let's just put it there for now. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, I remember as a kid, I, I did not really like it all. Like, it was, like, super gloomy. I didn't like that everyone looked so real. I thought, like, the actual fights and stuff were, like, meh. Uh, so, like, I actually didn't like the Pirates of the Caribbean world, which is why... Parts of the Caribbean and Kingdom Hearts 3 really surprised me. It was the polar opposite for me where it was like this beautiful, bright, like daylight world. It was really fun to go through. I really loved how the world looked. And so Kingdom Hearts 3, Parts of the Caribbean, I believe is like, like top of my list. And Kingdom Hearts 2 is very low. So I'm going to put Parts of the Caribbean right now in D. Again, I'm just trying to create like a widespread right now. So I have an easier time ranking other worlds. So like that might go up to C after. Maybe it'll go down to F. I'm not sure. But let's put that at D for now. Pride Lands was always one of my favorite worlds. I love Lion King. That was one of the rare movies I I actually watched from these. Funnily enough, a lot of these movies I still haven't watched. The only memory I have of them is through Kingdom Hearts. A funny example is Mulan. I still have not watched that. Whatever I know about the story is from Kingdom Hearts. But uh, Pride Lands or, or The Lion King World is one of the rare ones where I actually watched Lion King. I watched it a fuck ton of times and I really loved it. And so I really love the Pride Lands world. So I'm going to put this in A tier because in terms of Disney worlds, I think it might have been my favorite. I just have to put it below Twilight Tunnel and Hollow Bastion because I think those are just like better worlds overall in terms of vibe, in terms of story, the Thousand Heartless fight. And I think I've mentioned this um, in previous podcasts episodes but i always prefer the original kingdom hearts worlds compared to the disney ones and like i even said like i'd be okay if king Hearts at one point at some point just move fully to that i know it would never happen next we have space paranoids i remember like as a kid not liking that much again it was like like realistic characters the color scheme wasn't that interesting and like i, I don't think i found the uh the, the world itself that that fun and i'm trying to think of the fights too the fights i think were also like whatever i may gotta fight that like three-legged thing near the end i didn't like that uh i think the the fight against that big uh, floating head was okay too like i don't think like there's anything about this world where i was like whoa this is really fucking cool i always thought this was like meh and like i just did it so i think and honestly like if i had to like for example if i had to pick between playing through space paranoids right now or beast castle i think i'd rather to do beast castle so i'm gonna put space paranoids at c tier so right now we have like a decent spread we have twilight town hollow bastion at s pride lands at a beast castle at b space paranoids at c and uh parts of the caribbean at d next is land of dragons which is a mulan world i see land of dragons pretty much at the same tier uh as pride lands so i'm gonna put it in a tier at the end when we're kind of done ranking i'm also going to be ranking each of the tiers if i can and so like right now i'm just putting it however i want Want. but uh so far pride lands and land of dragons is at a tier toon world i can't remember for the life of me what it was called i don't think it was called toon town i think that was like a separate game that they had but uh i'm gonna call it toon town for now but i actually really enjoy toon town um i have ptsd with that one fucking part in it where you have to do the uh there, there's like a building on fire and you gotta fight like stuff outside it and you gotta fight cars that was really fucking hard for me for some reason those cars used to fuck me up so i have ptsd with that one moment but overall i like the vibe of it i kind of like seeing pete being simpler i like seeing this mickey that didn't talk and i believe this was like the first like encounter i had with steamboat willy mickey which for some reason i like i'm not sure why like I, i've never watched any i even have like a funko pop of steamboat uh willy but I, I like it for some reason the design so in terms of the world i think it was pretty fun i don't think it was amazing or anything but i th i think it's at the same tier as uh, Beast Castle, maybe like slightly above it. So right now I'll put it ahead of Beast Castle and B tier. But I'll see. Honestly, I'm, I might prefer to Beast Castle, so I might be moving stuff around later. But right now I put it in B tier, which is the same as Beast Castle. We have Agrabah. Agrabah is one of those worlds which like it was like on the brighter side of worlds. Like I said, I like more positive worlds. But I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of parts of it that I didn't really enjoy that much. I never really enjoyed like the flying carpet sections. Uh, the boss fights were like whatever. I didn't... Uh, I didn't really enjoy going into the lion's mouth, like that whole area. I have like very specific memories of like me being a kid and trying to like find a safe spot in that place. So I thought Agrabah was okay too. Like I'm trying to think of like any of the fights. They didn't really seem that special. And again, I didn't really have too much of a connection with it because I hadn't watched Aladdin. I still haven't watched Aladdin. Again, all I know about it is from clips I've seen online or just like from Kingdom Hearts 2. And I, I believe I see this as the same tier as um, Beauty and the Beast. So I'll put in B tier with it. I think I'm going to be moving some stuff because I do think Toontown is better than both these roles. So I might be moving stuff around later. Atlantis. Atlantis for me, funnily enough, I know a lot of people fucking hate Atlantis. I had no problem with it. I thought the, the mini games like with the music were like fine. Funnily enough, I went back to Kingdom Hearts 1 after Kingdom Hearts 2 and I fucking hated it in that world. I hated swimming around and shit. So I actually preferred it in this game. Uh, again, it's kind of hard to rank because it is more of a mini game world. It's kind of like 100 Acre Woods. Honestly, like if you ask me, like, do you want to play Beauty and the Beast or Agrabah or like Atlantis? I would say Atlantis. To me, it was fine. Like I did not like dislike it. So 
I'm going to put it in B tier right now, uh, right behind Toontown and right ahead of Beauty and the Beast and Agrabah. And uh, yeah, I'm, now that I'm looking at it, B tier is definitely going to be split more. I think I might be moving Beauty and the Beast and everything to C tier and moving everything down. Uh, we have a Disney Castle. This is a world I actually enjoyed very much. This is actually a world that when I, whenever I was done Kingdom Hearts 2 and I just wanted to play and fuck around in the worlds, this is a world that I always like going to because I believe when you're actually like done with the world, enemies don't spawn there anymore. So I kind of just like exploring there for fun i'm not sure what the hell i did but like i just like going there and it was probably one of the most like bright colorful world so i just like hanging out there so i actually see this on the same tier as like pride lands and um a land of dragons and i'm trying to remember specifically but like i think the world vibe was cool because at some point i believe you this is the world you used to go to toontown so i always loved like that aspect of it where like you had um, maleficent storms and you had to get rid of it by going through toontown or something like that it's been a while since i played but i always like the vibe of the world and I always thought it was cool that, you know, this was like King Mickey's world. This is like his home you're going to. So I always liked it from that aspect too. So I'm going to put an eight here along with Pride Lands and Land of Dragons. From there, we have Halloween Town. Halloween Town was a world I did not like that much as a kid. I did not like any of the fights. Oogie Boogie was like whatever. The conveyor belt fight was whatever. I didn't really like any of the characters. Um, I'm not really into the Tim Burton type of aesthetic slash movies either. So like I did, I really had no connection with this. And so like... Honestly, I did not like the world. I did not like the fucking character designs either when I was a kid, like Sora and Donald and Goofy. I'm like, these guys look fucking stupid. And so I, I didn't really like enjoy this world that much. Honestly, this is like lower than like Beauty and the Beast and Agrabah, like those type of worlds. So I'm going to put it in C tier right now with Space Paranoids. Honestly, I'd rather play Space Paranoids when compared to Halloween Town. So I'm going to put Halloween Town behind that right now in C tier. Uh, next, we have Olympus Coliseum. Olympus Coliseum is weird because this is also another world as a kid I did not like too much, but I kind of warmed up to it as I got older. Uh, this is also one of the worlds where like, there's like, in quotes, PTSD moments. Uh, the one that I'm uh, remembering specifically is like, there's this moment where you have to go up these three platforms, I think, and run away from like Hades. And you gotta, you gotta like fight these things and go through certain gates and then you gotta fight Cerberus at the end or something or something like that. I remember that was really a hard part for me to do as a kid. And so whenever I replayed it, I was like, fuck, I don't, I don't want to do this again. So I remember that being a, a hard thing to do. But at the same time, I like the like overworld segments of it. Uh, I thought the, um, the Hydra fight was pretty good. I know like it's kind of weird, like it's kind of wonky, but I, I enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed the Hero's Crest. That's one of my favorite Keyblades from when I was a kid and, um, you get it from that fight. So I think if i had to put it like it is probably on the same level as uh beauty and the beast like overall i think it is so i'm gonna put it with beauty and the beast i'll just put it ahead of it right now but that'll be in the b tier so b tier we have like five rules right now which is toontown atlantis olympus coliseum beauty and the beast and agrabah and uh, we only have two worlds left we have 100 acre wood and the world that never was the world that never was is interesting because technically you have the castle segment and you also have the 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 city segment the night city whatever it was called i thought the night city part was cool i kind of like the concept where like you had these two segments and you obviously learn more about it as you play 358 over two days i think it's pretty good it's kind of hard to judge because it's kind of like a final boss type location but it's really fucking big you obviously have a lot of legendary fights there you actually no technically you don't have the data battles here that's through hollow bastion i believe and so I'm trying to see where you would rank it but I feel like there's so much legendary battles here. I believe this is where you fight Roxas too in the actual final mix. So this has to go up high-ish, I believe. But at the same time, I'm not sure if like, if I think about like playing it, I really want to play it. I think this might be like top of B tier. Right behind Toontown for me. It is a really cool world, but like, but subjectively, what I would want to play, I don't really want to play that much. I'd rather play like Toontown, for example. Again, I prefer more lighthearted world, so that's how it is for now. So I'm going to put in B tier right behind Toontown. There's one more world left, which is 100 Acre Woods. 100 Acres Wood, however you say it. And this is a weird one. Where does it go? Let's see. You know what? It's a lighthearted world. I kind of enjoy it. I think I might honestly put it at the same tier as Toontown, so I'll put it with Toontown for now. And obviously, yeah, at this point, B tier is way too full. So just to sum everything up, my list so far is S tier is Twilight Town and Hollow Bastion. A tier is Pride Lands, Land of Dragons, and Disney Castle. B tier is Toontown, 100 Acre Wood, A World Never Was, Atlantis, Olympus Coliseum, Beast Castle, and Agrabah. C tier is Space Paranoids and Halloween Town. And D tier is Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, the first thing I want to do is break B tier. There is, I feel like, too much there. I think I can move Olympus Coliseum, Beast Castle, and Agrabah 
down a tier and everything else is going to go down a tier. So Pirates of the Caribbean goes from D to F. Spare, Space Paranoids and Halloween Town goes from C to D. Olympus Coliseum, Beast Castle, and Agrabah goes from B to C. So far, we have like a perfect fucking like bell curve. If you turn this shit sideways, I have like... This is perfect. Holy shit, this looks nice. Now from here, I believe we should start ordering the specific tiers. So S tier, let's start with that. We have Twilight Town and Radiant Garden. I love Radiant Garden. There's so much legendary moments. You have the DMX fight, Thousand Heartless Battle, everything with Cloud and Neon, like all the fucking cool characters are there. I really love it. But I think the vibes of Twilight Town for me just beat it out. Or do they- Ah, oh, this is hard. I fucking love Radiant Garden though. Hold up. My brain is saying Radiant Garden is above Twilight Town by my heart. <laughs> Which, I don't know if this makes sense, but my heart is saying Twilight Town is better. I just like- I actually like the Roxas segments. I love the entire vibes of, like, Roxas' crew. I love being there with Sora and doing the story segments there. The whole story between Axel and Roxas too. I'm gonna say Twilight Town is above for me. So S tier is enemy first is Twilight Town. And second is Hollow Bastion. Now we're gonna go to A tier. We have Pride Lands. We have Land of Dragons. We have Disney's Castle. I'm gonna say number one is probably i want it's weird because disney castle is a very weird type of world but it, like the way i'm judging is if i had to play right now which world would i want to play i think i would want to play disney's castle first and like I, I i don't know if i did like a top casual list if this is the order i would do but like when i really think about it i think i prefer disney's castle as a world and then after that i'd, ra I'd rather play pride lands and then after that it would be land of dragons so a tier is disney's castle then pride lands and then land of dragons then if you go to b b tier right now we have toontown hundred acre wood the world that never was in atlantis this order might be it I know it seems weird to some people that World That Never Was is under 100 Acre Woods in Toontown. But again, if I had to choose a world to play right now, I think it would be Toontown. I kind of like I kind of like the vibe. It's kind of cool. I like the fight with Pete. I always prefer boss fights that are like more like like humanoid rather than like uh, like a monster. And so fighting Pete and all that, I thought it was fun. I love seeing Mickey in his fucking apartment that's on fire and shit. There was that other place where you had to like, you were like a giant. That was pretty fun. And so I think Toontown is number one in B tier. And then I'll keep 100 Acre Wood right after that. Again, it's hard to judge it because it's a mini game world, but I liked it. Then after that will be the world that never was, and after that will be Atlantis. So I'm going to keep that order for B tier. C tier so far, I have Olympus Coliseum, Beast Castle, and then Agrabah. And honestly, I think that might be the order. You know what? I think as I got older, I like Beast Castle more. I'm going to put Beast Castle first, and then Olympus Coliseum, and then Agrabah. That's going to be the order for the C tier. And then D tier, we have uh, Space Paranoids, and then we have Halloween's Castle. Not ha what the fuck? Well, no, Halloween Town, no Halloween's Castle. From those two, I don't really like any of them, honestly. I think I do prefer Space Paranoids if I had to compare, and then Halloween Town after that. Honestly, Halloween Town might be F tier <laughs> with uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. I did not really enjoy any of those worlds. You know what? Fuck it. Let me... F ah, should I? The bell curve is so nice. Hold up. Now, nah, I'm gonna keep Halloween Town in D tier. Like, and the more I think about it, like, like Pirates of the Caribbean, like, you can snap and get rid of Pirates of the Caribbean from Converse 2 and I wouldn't give a fuck. For Halloween Town, I don't like it that much, but I still do enjoy parts of it, so I'm gonna keep it in D tier. So D tier, I'm gonna keep that Space, P space Paranoises first, and then Halloween Town, and then F tier is Pirates of the Caribbean all alone. And I believe this is my final list. I don't think I'm gonna be doing any last minute changes like i usually do with my other tier list so just as a sum up in case you're listening s tier is twilight town then hollow bastion a tier is disney's castle then pride lands then land of dragons b tier is toontown then 100 acre wood then the world that never was and then atlantis c tier is beast castle then the olympus coliseum and then agrawa d tier is space pyramids and halloween town f tier is pirates of the caribbean and that is my final list for kingdom wars 2 worlds this is really cool to see because again i don't know if i've done a list with all the worlds and if i did it was like a decade ago so kind of seeing it here visually is very cool and i think this is a i don't know why i'm fucking so late to tier, tier maker uh it's kind of fun to see like what you choose as your list so like i might do this more often i think once i'm like you know settled into my new place and like i can do normal episodes again i'll see maybe i'll do tier lists more often now that i know that i can do shit like this like worlds maybe i can do tier lists with characters of different jrpgs maybe that'll be fun and if it's something that i see that does perform well consistently maybe this can be like a weekly thing or a bi-weekly thing i'll see and it doesn't have to only be a special episode but yeah thank you guys for watching this special episode of spill the tiro this was episode 26 um if you enjoyed these special episodes you're welcome if you don't i am sorry i know these don't do don't do as well on uh, the audio feeds but it is what it is i just can't do normal episodes right now we will be back next week with episode 27 i cannot guarantee whether that will be a normal episode or a special episode since things are just really turbulent right now things changed last second again like literally an hour ago i was planning to do a normal episode tomorrow but something came up last second that i have to do tomorrow so i just thought of this so if you guys do enjoy these tier maker special episodes let me know down in the comments below if you're watching on youtube either on spill the tier or the 
the KHN Unlimited channel. Uh, leave a like, subscribe. That would be appreciated. If you're listening on audio feeds, remember to leave a five-star rating. It really helps this podcast out a bunch. I noticed the spikes that happen in the impressions whenever stuff like that happens. So it's very much appreciated. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week for episode 27. Peace. Peace.